Greetings, viewers and fellow Potterheads. That's the name for the Harry Potter fandom, right? It, forgive me, I'm such a noob and I don't remember. It, my primary fandom is Star Wars and we still don't have a fandom name. It's very annoying. The best we have is Rebel Scum, which you know I'm actually okay with. Can I start? Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna start introducing my Star Wars videos with Greetings, viewers and fellow Rebel Scum. Because that's a, that's a decent fandom name. It's better than Potterheads. Who named Potterheads? That's not important. Getting distracted before we even begin. Um, greetings, viewers. Already said that. Whatever. Today we have a two versus videos. Actually, this isn't a special, and it isn't a single battle. We're going to be a, doing a two and one because this is a theoretical matchup. Well, they're all theoretical matchups. This is a matchup with a theoretical character. Kind of. Kind of two of them. Let's actually get to the video and explain what I mean by that. Um, we are dealing, these two suggestions is Albus Dumbledore from the point in time where he just graduated. Um, like this is young Albus Dumbledore. This is Dumbledore after his Hogwarts studentship, um, getting out, having his plans to travel the world canceled, um, and his duel with Grindelwald. Like that's where I am taking, his first duel I should say, the one that killed his sister. I am taking like Dumbledore immediately after the fun after the funeral for his little sister, like broken nose and all, um, like that period of Dumbledore. So this is young Dumbledore before the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find the Movies, and well, like a hundred years or so before the Harry Potter books themselves. So this is young Dumbledore, theoretical character number one, in two different matchups. First, Tom Riddle immediately after school. That's versus matchup number two. Um, like, and I do mean Tom Riddle, not Lord Voldemort. This is immediately after leaving, like, at, during the time period where he's working for Borgens and Burks. So, young Tom Riddle. And the second battle, which has a non-theoretical character, versus young post-school Harry Potter. It's like Harry Potter from the ending of Deathly Hollows. Kind of self-explanatory. Um, so... Really, I think that's about all I need to say. We're going to be not only doing Riss's videos here, we're going to be theorizing, pitting three of the greatest figures in recent wizarding history up against each other, all before they reach their prime. Well, two of them before they reach their prime. I'm going to go out on a limb and say this is Harry Potter at his best. Thank you so much, Cursed Child. Like, that's my number one bone to pick with Cursed Child. Above everything else, what they did to poor Harry James Potter. Um, like, the entire book series of Harry Potter, in my mind anyways, is Harry's journey from the 11-year-old chosen one, uh, young kid, whatever, to being the big good of the series. In my mind, that's his trip. In the books, the movies are a little, a little different. In the books, it's Harry Potter going from the hero, the main character, the protagonist, to the big good, the chosen one, the number one facer down of evil. Um, that's one of my favorite parts of the book, and I really wish the movies had followed it, quite honestly, is the final confrontation between Harry Potter and Lord Voldemort is not an even one, and a completely different way than previously, than their previous bouts. It's not because Voldemort is so much older and wiser and more experienced and powerful. It's the exact opposite. It's because Harry Potter has become more powerful than Voldemort. Like, not not like he would win a versus video or anything like that. Well, he would because the Hor losing the Horcrux has damaged Voldemort too much. Um, Harry has become what Dumbledore should have been, as it were. Um, as much as I like Dumbledore, he's still one of my favorite characters. Um, and actually, part of why I like him is it turned out he wasn't the big good. Well, he was. He was kind of the big good. He wasn't as big a good as you thought. Dumbledore was not Gandalf. He was not Aslan. He was a much more realistic, as it were. More developed, um... I don't want to say these things, because that's like the reasons people use to get a better, or all the new modern stuff, because they're edgy, and mature, and dark, and blah 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 blah, depressing as heck too, so I don't even want to bother, but that's not important. Um, ignoring that I sound like I'm a guy from the 50s, in many ways my views line up uh, more often than I'd like them with, like, <laughs> the... 40s or whatever. I am old-fashioned when it comes to stories. I like the White Knight 
um, type stories. That's really the best way to put it. I like Superman better than Batman. I like DC better than Marvel. I like Episode 6 better than Episode 5 of Star Wars. But no, I'm completely serious. That's my reason for liking Episode 6. Like, it all... <laughs> I have never been comfortable with Han Solo being frozen in carbonite. That, like, must have traumatized me as a kid. I don't like seeing Han Solo frozen, Leia really bummed out that her boyfriend's so frozen, Luke finding out his dad is Darth Vader and being crushed by that and losing a hand. I don't, I don't like seeing the good guys lose. I know it's, it is so silly and childish and very... 1750s, forget the 1950s, 1750s of me, but I don't like seeing the heroes lose. Now, what am I even talking about? What was, oh yeah, I was ranting about Harry Potter. Still not on the subject I was actually supposed to be talking about, but it's closer. Um, yeah, that's a big part of why Harry Potter is one of my favorite um, Harry Potter characters, is he becomes the big good instead of Dumbledore by the end. He has become, as Dumbledore says, a better man than either he or Voldemort could ever hope to be. He has become the hero, the true big good leader of the good guys, just pones Dar Voldemort in their verbal battle. It's just awesome. And then Cursed Child comes along and he's kind of, sort of, completely insane and a really bad father. But that's not important. We don't need to rant about Cursed Child any more than we need to rant about Doctor Who Season 9. And no, I'm never going to get over Doctor Who Season 9. It's just, mm, okay, let's not rant about that. Back to the actual point of the video. Sorry for shouting there. <clears throat> and talking really fast. <clears throat> slow, slow down, get back on the point of the video. Okay, we're good now. Um, so yes. Young Dumbledore, obviously going to be a lot of theoretical aspects to that. And young Voldemort, obviously, again, theoretical aspects, um, versus each other. We'll do this one first. Who can truly said to be the better of these two wizards as far as combatants goes? Um, frankly, I'm going to side with Dumbledore on this one. In terms of raw power, I feel that Albus Dumbledore, um, excuse me, does have more than Voldemort. Um... I honestly, I see that as the truth. Wait, who says that? I honestly see that as the truth. Who's writing this stuff? Maybe if I actually wrote this stuff, like had a script or something, I wouldn't sound like a crazy homeless person who just happens to have a YouTube channel. Not important right now. Um, I do think, from what we have seen of Voldemort and what we can guess of Dumbledore and Grindelwald, Especially thanks to the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find a Movie. Um, which was awesome, by the way. You might get a few spoilers for that in here. We are talking about Dumbledore, after all. Actually, I'm going to describe one of the scenes. So, yeah, there's going to be a lot of spoilers for that in here. Um, I honestly have always seen Dumbledore as the more naturally powerful of the two. I think if Dumbledore had been in his prime, he could have taken Voldemort. Uh, after all, Dumbledore is far past his prime in Order of the Phoenix. He's an old man, after all. Um, and he still manages to tangle with Voldemort, who is also not in his prime, but he's closer than Dumbledore is. Like, at that point, Voldemort has lost several of his Horcruxes. Um, like, I think Dumbledore at his prime is when he took down Grindelwald in the 40s. And I think Voldemort at his prime um, was during the First Wizarding War. It's a little hard to tell... Because Primes, as far as Wizards go, is not at all the same Prime as, well, anyone else, frankly. Because their combative Primes are not at all dependent on physical ability. Magic works just as well for old Dumbledore as it does for young Dumbledore. In fact, better because he's older, wiser, and more experienced, and knows more magic. So, heck, come to think of it, Dumbledore and during the... The 114-year-old Dumbledore seen in the Harry Potter books might have actually been in his Prime. Uh, same goes for Voldemort. Well, not for Voldemort, because he lost his Horcruxes. I don't actually know how much that affects his power. Um, anyways, I'm rambling again. Um, from what we know of Dumbledore, we know that both Dumbledore and Tom Riddle um, excelled in school. They were both star pupils, like, put Hermione to shame, as far as it comes to smarts, just plain brains and intuitiveness, and just, they're both really good, excellent Amida ac Amidalically, that's a word. Academically speaking. Um, again, I see Dumbledore as the better of the two at this time period. Um, 
Voldemort at least has going for him. Uh, he's very smart. That is mentioned so many times throughout the books. Voldemort really only degenerates into a crazy serial killer later in life. Like, at the end there, Voldemort is less about tactics and more about, I have lost six-sevenths of my soul. That's healthy for you, right? <laughs> uh, but back here, is, he was an incredibly suave, intelligent, and just really quick-thinking guy. Uh, he, of course, managed the whole Chamber of Secrets debacle. Um, he kept getting away with murder. Uh, he tricked... The secret of Horcruxes out of one of his teachers. Um, he's basically just a really smart guy. However, he's not like globally famous. He's beloved in Hogwarts and will be remembered for years. Uh, well, decades, I should probably say. Um, even before he comes Voldemort. Dumbledore, on the other hand, I feel like he was gaining national fame even while that young. I have a feeling even then he was one of the most notable people in the country. Um, I'm just giving the impression that Dumbledore was more powerful than Voldemort. Especially, again, when they finally fight in the Order of the Phoenix. I saw Dumbledore as the winner there, quite frankly. I think he was the more powerful of the two. Um, well, yeah, obviously, he beat Voldemort, at least to some degree. Um, and honestly, I think that applies to the younger selves. They're both equal later in life almost equal with Dumbledore having the slight advantage later in life, and I think the same applies here. Um, from this time period, I think, the one thing that might mess this up is, I think Tom Riddle has already made a Horcrux, or two, I think only one, maybe two, at this point, and that would actually make it pretty difficult for Dumbledore to get a true victory, like he couldn't finish him off for good, but I do think, um, I, it means he would survive. Tom Riddle at least is getting out of this one mostly alive because he's got a Horcrux stashed away. Um, like, from this point in time, we know Dumbledore is a pretty decent duelist. He went head-to-head -head with Grindelwald, and this time period really isn't that long before the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find a movie. And in that, that movie pretty much cements me seeing Grindelwald as more powerful than Voldemort. Uh, yes, I know Voldemort is the greatest dark wizard of all time, with um, Grindelwald as only second. But first of all, that's the opinion given by people who are facing Voldemort in the present, rather than Grindelwald, who by then is like almost a hundred years in the past. It's like people in the 90s say Voldemort is worse than Grindelwald. Well, duh, they weren't there in the 40s. Well, Dumbledore was. Everyone else wasn't there in the 40s, where Grindelwald was at its height. So first of all, that's kind of biased. How do we actually know Voldemort is a worse dark wizard than Herpo the Fowl? I mean, really, Herpo the Fowl created the Horcrux and the Basilisk. He seems like a pretty mean dude. Um, but, like, compare the... Ver compare Voldemort to Grindelwald. In the book version of Deathly Hallows, uh, Voldemort does hold off Minerva McGonagall, Kingsley Shackable, and Slughorn at the same time. In the film of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, here's the spoiler, Grindelwald World goes head-to-head -head with like three dozen auras and was winning. That's like the best part of that movie. I love that ending scene. Uh, mostly thanks to the auras. I, I will be completely honest, I am a big Western fan. I like the look of Western gunslinger-type characters. The wide-brimmed hats and the trench coats. Those, I just love those. It's... Like why Cad Bane is one of my favorite bounty hunters. It has nothing to do with his character or anything like that. I just love his hat and coat. They look so cool. And so to see in Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, an entire army of wizards dressed in trench coats and fedora, that was really awesome. Um, excuse me, I'm fanboying about clothes. I'm turning into rarity. This is ridiculous. A uh, reference. That doesn't matter right now. Moving on. Am I? Yeah, I can move on. Um, so bluntly, I don't think it's, like, I think Voldemort is in the same tier as Dumbledore and Grindelwald. I think all three of those belong in the same group. If there was a duel between any of those three, it's pretty much a 50-50 chance who's going to win. But if you make me pick someone, like, pick a hierarchy here, I would put Voldemort on the bottom, then Grindelwald, then Dumbledore. I think the Voldemort being the greatest dark wizard of all time has more to do with Voldemort being a better dark lord than Grindelwald gold rather than being a better warlock 
than Grindelwald. Because after all, Grindelwald lost after, I guess, relatively not that long of Reign of Terror. He didn't come back a second time, and eventually, in the books at least, he repented. Grindelwald eventually fought better, had remorse, and was outright sorry and kind of really depressing that he was a dark wizard. Um, and hey, Harry Potter wins a lot of points for that. Grindelwald is, like, no, make no mistake, Grindelwald was the second greatest dark wizard of all time. He was a bad dude, and a much better dude than Voldemort, really, because Voldemort was way too obsessed with Britain, and here's Grindelwald conquering all of Europe, if not all of the world. Um, uh, yeah, obviously, he's over in America. He's, like, taking on continents rather than Voldemort, who was tied up with this country. Granted, that one country had Dumbledore leading its defense, so that's a big difference. Like, there's a reason Grindelwald avoided England. Um, Grindel... Yeah, am I saying that right? I have no idea, idea if I'm pronouncing Grindelwald right. Um, and who cares? Moving on. What are we talking about? I get a feeling I'm going... I'm way off topic, and... Oh. Um, uh, so, yeah, honestly, I think Dumbledore had more academic achievements. He, we already know he was a good duelist at this time. He went head-to-head -head with Grindelwald and his brother, both of whom are pretty decent themselves, whereas Voldemort was more of a serial killer still. I mean, Tom Riddle was more of a sneak into your home, Avada Kedavra, you in the back, get his Horcrux and leave, or just spraying a basilisk on you. Um, he was more... Again, he was a Slytherin as opposed to the Gryffindor Albus Dumbledore. He was not, hey, I'm the most powerful wizard of all time. I'm going to stand up and duel you like an honorable knight. He was more, hey, I'm the most powerful wizard of all time. I'm still going to just stab you in the back because that's easier. Like, the end. Um, I won, haha. <laughs> he uses his wit, his cunning, a lot more than um, Dumbledore did. But this is a straight-up fight, and so I'm going to give it to Dumbledore. So that's one versus out of the way. The hopefully less rambly one, Young Albus Dumbledore versus Young Harry Potter. Um, and in this regard, it's a bit unfair to either... Well, to both of them, really, because it's completely theoretical. Like, this entire video really isn't a versus video. It's a theory video. It's, how good do you think Dumbledore and Voldemort were at these points in time as compared to yada, yada, yada? Um, but honestly, with Dumbledore versus Harry, I'm going to give it to Harry. There's no, there's no doubt that Dumbledore is more than capable of killing Harry at this point. Um, he has certainly more academic achievements. He's got a bit... He has more accolades, we'll say that. He is, on paper, the more powerful, learned, and skilled wizards of the two at this point. Harry doesn't even have a complete wizarding education, and he certainly wasn't the near-legendary student that Dumbledore was. But, but, Harry has two things on his side. Both Dumbledore and Tom Riddle, we'll throw Tom Riddle in this too, both of them are very much so, uh... Best example I can think of at the moment, they're both Anakin Skywalker from Attack of the Clones. Ridiculous amount of unta of potential. They are both two of the most powerful natural wizards in their um, eras, respectively speaking. They both have a lot of um, potential, raw power really, and they have the formal education. They're the textbook, the academic. Um, both of them are kind of more famous for their intelligence and achievements in learning rather than their power. I mean, there wasn't a lot. They don't even nowadays. They don't really give you as many awards for being a good fighter as they they do for being a good um, politician or whatever. Like an MMA fighter has a lot less prestige than say a president or something. Um. But anyways, getting off track once again here. I am very good at that. That's what I do best. Um, Harry, on the other hand, has real experience as opposed to academic one. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to say that Dumbledore is like the textbook, can't do anything in real life, because he's obviously not. He had a fair few practical achievements then, especially his duel with his brother in Grindelwald. 
Um, but Harry has been struggling and fighting and scraping for survival his entire life since he was 11, basically. His entire life since he was 11. That doesn't make sense. Don't read it too deep into that. Um, like, he has fought in a war at this point. Um, like it's mentioned in Book 7, um... At the same time, Dumbledore was still at school and writing letters to Grindelwald about how the two would uh, take over the world together and just have a gay old time, pun intended. Um, at that same time, Harry Potter is out saving the world, like, literally. He has the much more com combat-ready experience. Like, I think if Harry's brother, fictional brother obviously, tried to punch him at his sister's funeral, I think Harry would have been ready for that. Dumbledore obviously wasn't. Um, that's really like one of the biggest signs to me that Albus Dumbledore was a more scholarly type um, than practical fighter like Harry was, is that he got his nose broken. He got into an actual proper hand-to-hand -hand fight, and he got a broken nose. I don't really think Harry would feel it that badly. He's a very... Um, I guess you could say he's more Gryffindorish. Um, I hate stereotyping Gryffindor as just the bold, brash, beat 'em up, eh, dumb muscle. I guess I should say. Um, but Harry certainly fits the stereotype a lot better. And you know, he's faced wizards who are technically better than him so many times. Like every single major Death Eater, including Voldemort himself, multiple times has gone head to head with Harry, and he's escaped each time. He doesn't have the the achievements Dumbledore does. He doesn't have the education, the accolades, or even the raw potential. Harry Potter, I do not think, is going to ever become as powerful as Dumbledore was. But, this is still young Dumbledore. This is right after school. Except for Dumbledore, it's right after school. For Harry, it's right after a war. This is Harry at his best. And quite bluntly... I think you can take Dumbledore. I mean, again, Dumbledore knows all the tricks. He knows more, and he has more raw magic. But Harry's a fighter. He's been in these situations. He has the practical response. It's like Dumbledore um, can do the big, flashy, technically better, um, exuberant effects. Harry can just shoot a stunner and hit him while he's doing all that. Um, that's not like what I actually think would happen. It's just like a suggestion, an idea of what would happen. Um, I honestly think Harry's the more practical of the two, and battle-learned rather than book-learned, and in the verses, that counts for a lot. So I declare both Albus Dumbledore and Harry Potter the winner, because Albus Dumbledore beat Tom Riddle, because he's more of a... Oh, I already said all that. Um, yeah, that's about it for um, this one. Like, yeah, basically just a lot of theorizing, more an opinion piece on how good I think Albus... Dumbledore was at that time compared to these. I already said that. I'm repeating myself. Um, uh, yeah, that's about it for this time. So thank you again for watching. Uh, please continue to watch these random rambly videos I make. And yeah, this is Captain Moonraiser signing off.